Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel here, it's the Mac, and welcome back to, uh, let's have a look at the Panish Campaign's Budapest 45, a um, sort of showcase and a little let's play of that. So another great title here from War Game Design Studios, uh, former John Titter Legacy Games. Uh, Panzer Campaigns, for, uh, Budapest 45 there. Yeah, so this game is interesting. We have a title that's way towards the end of the war. Some of the um, bloody fighting that took part there as the um, Russians closed in on some of those... Uh, last bastions of the German, where the Germans uh, held, so to speak. So, uh, obviously nothing different than the uh, what they always look like, these past campaigns. I've showcased a lot of these titles. And uh, so we're gonna have a look at uh, the folder. We usually dive into that and have a look. That's what it looks like when you install the game there. Lots of interesting things here. And lots of good documentation. Uh, actually, most of the documentation can actually access from the um, that app, you know, this this program that you can get from the War Game Design Studios. There, the menu program. This is this is really good. You can open up uh, many of the uh, useful useful PDF files, um, the game, of course, and editors and things like that. They have um, some of these um, Word documents. You're going to have to go into the folder and open, and these. Alternate campaign changes, the Ed Volcano Man, different versions of the scenarios uh, are as well in this uh, title as in, I think, every single uh, campaign, I mean, uh, uh, past campaign's title. Right, you get some BMPs and uh, like the victory uh, pictures and stuff. Um, so... Of course, one of the first um, one of the first PDF files to open is uh, always the designer notes, the notes, and uh, as always, very well written, very well researched, and um, this basically gets you all the information you need for the game, uh, how they made it, how long it took, who was involved in the project, project and um, explanation of what actually comes with the game and stuff. So it's Budapest 45. It was a, uh, in uh, Hungary there. The, uh, th this title, we'll go into that as we go through this uh, notes. I think it's better. So in, in the first part here, it just sort of tells you who was involved and how, how it came about and stuff. So here's a good summarization of what... Uh, actually comes with the game there so it's the prelude of budapest battle and uh, the soviet attack which closed in on the encirclement of budapest you have operation Conrad, which was a german counteroffensive to try to uh, well to relieve the defenders basically but it was an impossible task i think they switched tactics to actually maybe to actually create a corridor for the for them to escape through the city uh, but they all failed and then you have something called Spring Awakening, March 45, a late war rally and more feeble effort to do what failed in January there. Um, so there's some good stuff written here, uh, how they got the maps and the... Uh, this here is really good, good read, the historical approach. Tells you basically the history of the battle and what took part and how they pushed forward what the Hungarians did, what the Romanians did. The Romanians switched sides there as they were being invaded as well. And uh, so they, the Romanians took part in the attack uh, on Hungary there with the uh, Soviets and the uh, Nazi Germany and the Hungarians actually uh, defended there. And uh, so it uh, goes on about that. And then tells you a bit about the scenarios which this is this is really good um, this is good here because it explains uh, as you can see when you open some of these uh, when you have a look at some of the scenarios here you have different kinds of um, uh, abbreviations uh, you have the um, well h2h h2h means head to head of course you have the alternative and uh, 
okay i couldn't find a really good example there but uh, if you go back to the, um, the folder here it goes up uh, it says, as with the previous games in the series, we've continued to scenario file names uh, convention, where the file names begins with a uh, num symbol followed by a number. Uh, the numbers represent the date and scenario number using the format uh, month and day. Yeah, so you got 44, 10, 29 there. Okay. So uh, that's something new for me as well. I didn't know that, actually, that that represents the date. Okay, that's interesting. So it should go up to 45 there, yeah, January 45 as well. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, and the, uh, let's see here, uh, the number represents the date, scenario number, and format, month and day, yeah. Uh, the double X portion represents the scenario number on that particular day. The introductory or getting started scenarios is number zero, zero. So yeah, that's, that's usually the case. Uh, for this title, we've included additional starting and uh, getting started as, uh, as well felt, as we felt all players had best to be familiar with aspects of crossing the major rivers such as using has boats. Yeah, yeah. There's a diff there is a yeah. There is two different one here. Here you get to uh, do that river crossing. Get to learn to do that because there's of course some of that going on in the um, the, the Russians had. A couple of bridgeheads in this uh, big battle and uh, engineer units uh, to ferry uh, foot units over the river and create bridgeheads and building a pontoon bridges and stuff like that yeah uh, when we test these games we play almost exclusively against the AI but most of the testers are avid play by email fans they could see where most scenarios were best duplicated with the second copy of the scenario optimized speci uh, specifically for the head-to-head -head play. These scenarios are designated with an A after the number. Okay, so yeah, so these here. There's a little A there. They are, it says even here in the description, it's optimized for head-to-head. -head. So that's a good one to keep track of. Uh, so you know when you want to play your buddy there. And they also have, yeah, here you have, um, Budapest offers a few situations where the AI had enough local superiority as to offer a human defender, enough of a challenge. And in these scenarios, we've used a B designation. So that's good. If you want to get yourself a challenge there versus the AI, uh, it's, it's the ones with the, with the B there. So there should be uh not that many actually just here's a few with the b there uh but of course you could play the other ones as well but i guess th those with the b are more sort of designated as being optimal uh for the ai there uh both a and b designers uh design scenarios have a designer note at the end of the overview indicating how the scenario is best played there's also a note in the title and the line of the scenario the setup will normally be very similar the differences are in the intangibility design issues such as victory levels supply levels and strength and fortifications players also have the advantage of slider that they can use to give you uh, the other side an edge in combat there yes so that, that's kind of standard for the uh, panzer campaigns there uh, so they have the scenario list here in the end there all the scenarios um, and uh, there have the scenario overviews of course it goes more in depth so all that is actually uh, maybe not all the documentation but much of it is actually implemented in these descriptions here now which is great um, so that's a good one there um, the, uh, the uh, Designer notes, always a good read. They have something else here as well. They have the Budapest 45 Operation Conrad Kamaram tank battle. And that is, this is a big scenario. It's a huge one, actually. Uh, so it says, many years have passed since Budapest 45 came and was launched. It's a received qual uh, quality revision by the Volcano Man that did improve the old stock campaign. Since then, new information and research has surfaced. This mod is a variant based on, on Conrad main campaign with the new sources and research applied. So they have the optional rules for that. And the scenario is actually, in fact, three linked battles. You have the north of the Danabu, south of the Danabu, and uh, Budapest, Siege of Budapest, their first generated to the end of the scenario there. So 
that's pretty cool. Uh, that scenario is actually, see if I can find it. Um, sort by length, because it's, I know it's a very long, here it is, it's huge. 420 turns, jays. <laughs> pretty massive there, so. Take you about a year to play, I guess. <laughs> no, but it will take you a long time there. Um, but it's, it's included, it's pretty cool. And so it's huge, huge fight there. And then of course they have uh, some other big ones, just 395 turns. And this is the, uh, the Operation Conrad, I guess. The, um, so this is a variant one here. They have the different, they have a, uh, the Hungarian capital the city was encircled 26th of December there. Hitler ordered the uh, 4th SS Panzer Corps to relocate from Poland to Hungary. By the evening of the 31st, the leading enemies had detrained and a decision was made to launch an immediate attack. The goal of the SS troopers were to rescue the besieged SS brethren in Budapest. Hitler's goal, on the other hand, was to reestablish the status quo. Shades of Stalingrad all over again. Yeah, So they have that. It's pretty big. And circlement scenario here. Uh, 298 turns. The Budapest Siege, there's a hundred turns. They have a couple of variations of that. Head-to-head -head versions. So that's cool. And they have some smaller ones for the, the third Conrad. The Conrad, Operation Conrad was divided into three phases, basically. So um, they have the third one here, 90 turns. Paula? I'm not sure what that is. This is a hypothetical scenario designed to be played Axis Human versus Soviet AI. Uh, there were two op operations to relieve Budapest, Conrad and the lesser known Paul. Okay, so that was the lesser known one there. I thought they were all called uh, Conrad there. Because here initially we favored Paul as an attack from the area of the Lake Balaton. Yeah, the Lake Balaton played a big part in the operation there. Um, so they got that. That's cool as well. Prelude. For the uh, attack there as well, Conrad one, many different versions here. Uh, they, so they have that optimized for the uh, AI as well. It's pretty cool. Sixty four turns, that's doable. And so there's a lot of Conrad here. See, it starts all the way here, and uh, they have some other divided Camaron, Camarno. Uh, just as Conrad in the offensive was beginning uh, to w wind down and stall, the Russians launched their own attack, aimed to take the stream out of the, the steam out of the further German attack plans. The blow was landed along the north bank of the Nab River by the Six Guard Tank Army. So they have that as well. More. They have a smaller version here, I guess, of Conrad. And. Uh, Lots, lots of stuff here. Okay, so I got it sorted by, I got to go back to title there. So preload, 90 turns there. Yeah, so lots of good scenarios here. We're going to have a look at the, uh, so they got the, the uh, campaign maps as well embedded in this game. Operation Conrad there, first to the 8th of January there. It shows you there, the attack of the Germans here as they were going in towards uh, the Budapest there. They were besieged. They got campaign map two, which covers the 9th to the 12th. So they that's when they made another ad, further advancements. It came pretty close. They came pretty close there. And they also have the attack in the south there. And uh, third campaign map deals with the 12th to the 27th there. Yeah, that's as far as they got there. They were stopped, basically, so. They have that, that's pretty cool. The change file of the new system, the new Budapest for, yeah, this is the all revised now that the War Game Design Studio has the catalog of the former John Tudor games there. So they have uh, enhancements. Um, pause the video, have a read there. And uh, parameter data editors, sub maps, and the license designer notes. That's what we had a look at. 
and you can have you can order you have the battle editor these are all in scenario editors these are all part of the um, past campaigns uh, games there sub map editor main program getting started is really good for this this is a good fight they revised it, it looks uh, more slick uh, so it's divided into two since you get to try out uh, the river crossings as well. It's pretty extensive, but uh, it's really good. If you don't, if you're not familiar with these games, these are really good to go through. You learn, you learn a lot in these uh, um, these uh, getting started. They're really, really well made. And then you have the second introduction scenario. So they go through that as well to learn how to river troops across and attack positions and build bridges. So that is very good. And uh, there's some more tips and tricks here about having a look at the parameter data. It's always important in scenarios for stacking purposes and uh, stuff like this, like air availability and stuff. They're always good to have it. I usually don't, <laughs> I usually forget, but these are really important actually for the scenarios. So uh, always have a look at those. Uh, what else do we got here? We got uh, the user manual is the standard one now used, the um, latest version here. These, these are really, really well made. We've been going through these in the previous uh, showcases. Uh, we got some nice pictures in there as well. So uh, really good manual, of course, that comes with the game there. And... Uh, yeah, that's basically it there. So uh, we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be doing something. I'm gonna, which I always do. I'm gonna pick a scenario and play it, and uh, show you, show you some gameplay. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna have to do that in the uh, in the next part of this showcase. Uh, but uh, so the, yeah, it's the siege of Budapest. It was a bloody, it was a bloody battle indeed. I mean, it was it was. I think something almost like a. 80% of the Budapest was destroyed in the fight in here. The the Russians just threw whatever they had on that attack. It was, it was a massacre. It was a bloodbath in that in, in the battle. It, it was really a sad story there. Um, the uh, I think the Russians lost. I think they they lost over 80,000 men or something in, in this battle. I mean, people have died in casualties, and I think over a quarter of a million soldiers were wounded in, in, in this. Um, it was a really brutal fight there. I mean, there was like something like 800,000 civilians left in, in the city as well. And you had German troops and Hungarian forces that I think they were together, they were all, all about 60,000 defenders or something like that. It, it, was, it, was a, it was a real crazy fight there. And as you know, Budapest is actually it, it, it's it's uh, the east and the west part of the city. One one I think the the west no the yeah the west part is called Buda, and Pest is the east part of the city. So as the Russians were actually closing in, ma uh, many of the German troops actually retreated to the to the Buda side. Uh, and uh, many of the Hungarian troops were left behind, and the Germans actually blew up the bridges. So they, when they wanted to, they couldn't pull out, and it was it was a massacre there. They, many many Hungarian soldiers died there, and <clears throat> and as the Buda was actually completely surrounded by uh, Russian troops, even the German defenders were split up as they uh, fought into the city there, the Russians, and that that, that the uh, the commander. Uh, of uh, the German commander of the city there he he was a blind follower of Hitler he uh, I mean he, he I think I think many of his subordinate commanders wanted him to, to get the hell out of there and, and escape the city but he was he the, 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 the uh, Hitler ordered that the, the city was going to be turned into a fortress city and that means defended to the last bullet and the last soldier so he really uh, I mean, he, yeah, he listened to Hitler there, <laughs> unfortunately, and uh, caused a lot of suffering on the population there and the, the soldiers that died. I think right at the end, he actually tried to make a breakout, but it, it, was, it was a complete failure. It was too late. 
and most of those German and Hungarian soldiers were actually killed in that break. I think only like, I've read, read somewhere, only like 700 soldiers made it uh, out. Uh, so you can understand that there was a lot of dead people in that town. So, and the relief that was sent never actually made it uh, to the, uh, they, actually, they never made it, uh, yeah, this is what the closest they got, basically. So it was a very um, brutal battle, for sure, this. Um, so it's an interesting title, for sure. There's uh, lots of different, you get to uh, fool around with some of those late German um, divisions and SS units to fight off. Uh, I mean, obviously the Russians have probably pretty low morale and, and I mean in the high casualty rates just sort of threw in conscripts there constantly but the superiority in numbers usually wins the day if you're willing to sacrifice <laughs> a lot of people uh, and the superiority in artillery of course devastating in air airstrikes uh, was at the uh, Russians they had that going for them basically the Germans was a depleted force at this time of the um, the war and uh, so I think there's actually a pretty cool scenario in here that there is a what if the Germans had only diverted one more panzer corps um, to the the action what would have happened because the Conrad Relief Force and the cooperation, they, they were, it was quite powerful uh, forces that were committed there. And some of those SS units were very well armed and there was a lot of good tanks and equipment. But um, logistics and weather was also a big factor in this campaign. Uh, there was mud and snow and uh, pretty horrendous uh, conditions in the weather that... Uh, implemented um, some of these um, uh, tasks for the for the army basically uh, so now of course I can't find it because I can't remember what it was called but uh, maybe it was in the documentation there um, yeah no I read it somewhere I, I've just I've lost it now I, I don't know where it was but uh, yeah, here, here's, here's something about the, the convert scenario group represents both the siege of Budapest and the three attempts to relieve the siege. Uh, was the spirit of all three convert officers. So the, the, the fourth SS Panzer Corps and the third and the fifth uh, SS Panzer divisions was the spirit of the three of the convert operations. The German contingent with the Budapest pocket was based upon the something SS Gibbs K, consisting of 8th and 22nd SS Cavalry Division. Yeah, so the, yeah, that was. And interesting as well, there was cavalry divisions present. Some accounts indicated that the members of the year had friends in the pocket, and this motivated them to try to get their friends out of trouble. In the event, the second operation, though it was the smallest of the three attempts, probably came the closest to rescuing the surrounding troops. This was uh, an effort was stopped by Hitler's direct order. The survivors, uh, to a man, believe or did until uh, their recent deaths, that they could have broken through if not stopped by this order. Okay, so that, yeah, Hitler again <laughs> meddled in, in the strategy and it all went tits up, basically. Um, yeah, so this, this is a good read, as I've said before. Uh, this, if you buy this game, have, have a read here. This is really good. I mean, all, all the stuff is here. Um, so, uh, really good... Uh, this is what I love about these games is they come with some good documentation. So you don't have to do research on other... I mean, of course, you can go dive deeper into this and there's probably lots of good documentaries to watch as well, of course. But, I mean, it's all here. I mean, the basics of it. And it gives you a good sort of overview of what, what the hell was going on there. So that's uh, Budapest 45 for you. Uh, I'm going to do a Let's Play of this. We're going to see what... Uh, what I'm picking here uh, probably will be one of these, I'm thinking, uh, that are optimized for uh, for the uh, AI, beat challenge. Uh, what did it say? It said something, um, 
Let's see if I can find it there. Yeah, so these scenarios are designed with an I, uh, A after the number. Budapest offers a few situations where the AI had enough local superiority as to offer a human defender enough of a challenge. And in these scenarios, we've used B designation. Okay, so that's going to maybe do one of those B ones there. That would be cool. Kexmeket got there. 12 turns is pretty good. Uh, 64, a uh, bit too big, I think. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we got something here. 42, that's pretty big as well. So not a lot there, but uh, some of the others you could play as well. So that's it. Uh, hope you guys are going to be enjoying this. If you have questions, just write in the comments. And I'll uh, pick it up in the next video there. So it's going to be fun to have a look at Budapest 45 there, Pants Campaigns. So uh, I'll see you in the next part. And uh, we'll rig a battle and uh, see how it goes. So thanks for watching, man. I'll see you in the next.